Hello, thanks for tuning in to Tech Talk Tuesday. My name is Brian Mursky, and I own and operate Veranda Technologies right here in Brick Township, New Jersey. We serve the Ocean, Monmouth, and surrounding counties uh, in this area. Last week, we talked about passwords and online security, and we ran a little long, so I'm going to try to talk a little faster this week. I know that everybody has days, uh, you know, busy schedules to get back to, but we want to provide valuable content uh, maybe something a little bit deeper than just a quick tip every week. So we're going to try to give you what we can, but not take up too much of your day. Uh, so we talked about, last week, uh, talked about not writing down your passwords in plain sight, not using the same password for every website that you log into, rotating your passwords, adding symbols, adding characters, numbers, making them more complex. The problem with that, obviously, is that you end up with a very difficult lot of passwords to track. So um, we solve most of our problems, but how do we keep track of all of those passwords? And I mentioned that I like the use of password manager apps. So where I would start is on your iPhone or your Android phone on your smartphone. Go to the store. Uh, on the iPhone, it's the, uh, or the iOS platform, it's the App Store and the Play Store on the Google or Android platform. Do a search for password managers and you're going to get hundreds. I'm going to list through some of the most popular and more common to give you a starting point. Uh, certainly read the reviews and ratings. That's always a great place to start when you're looking for an online service or product. Um, so one of the oldest, uh, or I guess two of the oldest, are KeePass, K-E-E-P-A-S-S, -S, and LastPass. I like them because they are both available, and many of the ones I'll mention this is true for as well. Um, I like these because they're, they've are they been around a long time, and they are both available for Mac, iPhone, um, Android, and PC. The reason that's important is one of the bigger concerns I have with keeping passwords all in one place is not what you'd think. Uh, most people say you'd be concerned that somebody else, if they get your database, they get your phone, they'll have all of your passwords. That's a concern, but it's not the big one. Uh, the big one is that I won't have them. If somebody gets my phone or I drop my phone in water, I'm not going to have access to those passwords, and that scares the heck out of me. So I like the ability to sync from the iPhone to the PC or from the iPhone to the cloud so that if something happens to the phone, I still have that database. I can log into a website and I can get it. Um, another one of the very popular password apps is called 1Password, the number one password. This is a little bit on the pricier side. It's uh, $50 for the Mac, $18 for the iPhone, free for the Android, but it's very, very limited. They're still building it out for the Android. It started as a Mac product, which is why they went iPhone first. Uh, and it is pricey for an app, obviously. $18 is on the high side, but it offers uh, 256 AES encryption, which is the best you're going to get on an app like this. If you can uh, find an app that's in your price point with the features you want with 256 AES encryption, that's obviously better <clears throat> than 128 or no encryption. Uh, Keeper is another one. Uh, Keeper is free to download and use, so it's a different <clears throat> pricing model. You can use the app all you want. If you want to back up to the cloud, it's $10 a year, so it's a recurring $10 every year subscription. M Secure, the letter M Secure, uh, also pricier. Now, again, when I say pricier, no amount of money is too much money for a safe and secure and easy to use password app. So I'm in no way insinuating you shouldn't pay it. It's just $20 is more expensive than free to use and $10 a year. Uh, M Secure is $19.99 for the Mac or the PC. $9.99 for Android or iOS. <clears throat> Those are flat fees, though. They're not recurring. Um, M-Secure is a little different in how you browse. Once you have everything in, there uh, you can browse folders of logins. It's a, a very nice, intuitive way to search um, for the website that you want to visit quickly. So it's more user-friendly, I guess, than some of the others, easier to use. Um, and Dashlane D-A-S-H-L-A-N-E is very similar to M-Secure. Uh, Dashlane is free to download. They let you use the password manager, the autofill, and some other features. But if you pay the $29.99, uh, $30 a year uh, subscription, which is, you know, every year, um, you also get 
some of the better features. It, it does a really neat thing where it color codes the sites um, with the colors from the website. So your Amazon would be the colors of Amazon. Netflix would be red and black to, to look like Netflix. So um, those are some of the more popular. I actually use a program called Data Vault. Um, I have another family member that uses Safe in the Cloud. Um, Safe in the Cloud, I don't believe there's an iPhone version. It's Android only, and then that backs up to uh, the cloud. And Data Vault is the one I have. It was $10 when I purchased it. Uh, free for the iPhone, or maybe $2 for the iPhone, and then an extra 10 if you want the PC version. I like that my stuff is not in the cloud. I, I just didn't trust the cloud. So I sync only to my computer. It does not go to the cloud. It sits on my phone, and then it sits on my computer whenever I'm on my Wi-Fi. I can back up from the iPhone to the uh, to the PC. So you go online, you look for one of the apps, you read the reviews, you look at the ratings, the features, you decide on a price point, you download the app. You can try a few. Once you have it, that's when the real fun starts. And by real fun, I mean the opposite of that. Um, now you have to take your life and enter it. And it stinks. I'm not going to, you know, there's no way to sugarcoat it. It's an awful process. You have to do it. I'm urging you to do it. It's important to do it. But it's awful. Um, I wouldn't try to do it all at once. I would maybe nip 20 minutes, uh, you know, twice a week. Uh, maybe try to do 30 minutes twice a week. Just put in a bunch of stuff. Start with your more frequently used sites, your Amazons, your Netflix, your financial sites, things that you log into frequently. Get them out of the way. Uh, you'll have some sites like maybe Consumer Reports or uh, yearly subscriptions for newspapers, magazines, that you don't log into as often. You may forget about them until the next time you go to log in. Uh, so now, do you actually put your real password in the app? That's a great question and it's up to you. I don't. Uh, in most cases, what I enter into the app, just for a slightly added piece of security, is a variation of the password. So for example, um, and I'll give you a couple that I don't use, but I have two parents. Every well, Most people have two uh, parents, so you have, uh, my parents' names are Sherry and Mitch. So if I had a password that was Mitch999 dollar sign, let's say, I enter it as Sherry999 dollar sign into my app, somebody that steals the app or gets access to the app isn't going to know that. That's only up here in my head. My wife might be able to make that leap. My kids might be able to make that leap. But even then, they might not necessarily make that leap. So if somebody gets the app, they have a clue to my password, but they don't actually have the password. Maybe I put a dollar sign when it's really a hashtag. You know, you could play games like that. I mentioned in last week's video, I think I'm a Mets fan. So I might put baseball one, two, three, exclamation point, or baseball hashtag one, two, three. I know that's going to be Mets hashtag one, two, three, or Mets one, two, three hashtag. Somebody else wouldn't know that if they get the app. So you can play games like that. You can, uh, your system might be for uh, social media sites, you use a hashtag. For financial sites, you use a dollar sign, but maybe you leave that out in the app. You just don't put that. You know there's going to be a symbol. They might know there's a symbol, but they're not going to know which symbol. They don't know your system. Uh, you don't have to make your system that easy. Certainly where dollar signs would be financial sites and and uh, hashtags being social media. <clears throat> but you get the idea. You can you can play those little mind tricks. Um, I think I also mentioned last week, Grandma, in my case, lived in Florida most of her life. So I, I might put Florida 999 instead of Grandma 999. This isn't an easy topic. Uh, password security is only going to get more difficult as... Websites require more and more complex passwords. As we have more and more passwords in our lives, more things that we're logging into, more things we're responsible for, more family members that we are responsible for, clients, whatever. It's not easy. Um, it's going to get more difficult, but it doesn't have to be daunting. It's certainly not an impossible uh, challenge or hurdle to uh, to, to jump. Um, and you need to pay attention to it. It's an important topic. I hope the information that we provide in these videos is valuable. 
I hope you're getting something out of it. If you have suggestions for a topic that you'd like to see, please drop us a line. Uh, helpdesk at verandatech.com, V-E-R-A-N-D-A-T-E-C-H.com. Have a wonderful day.